What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today we're going to be completing the Liga Santander SBC to begin with and then we're going to be going back through the La Liga because I have, I think, 15 of the teams all but done. Um, before we get into that, I just want to express my frustrations with what has transpired uh, over the last uh, couple of days. Um, obviously, as a personal choice, I decided to stay home today and work right I was supposed to go to Manchester uh, I was supposed to be with Zway and Tobias going to the Manchester City Leicester game I didn't end up making it because I couldn't create content last night because the game was down that, that's that's not really what frustrated me right because that was my personal choice I could quite easily have taken a day off today you know I said to you guys that I, I might not be going to Manchester now and uh, you know one of the top comments was like dude just take a day off I, I understand your guys wants to be like dude you could just take a day off it's not a problem but for me i've spent the last decade building up what i have and i've only ever missed one day during that time and that that, that was a personal day that i had to take for you know for personal reasons i'm sure some of you know some of you don't but outside of that i've never taken a day off and i'm not about to throw that away just because i you know i've made it or whatever it may be I, i'm dedicated to the cause i'm dedicated to you guys i'm dedicated to getting the content out there so i passed up on that opportunity but that was a personal choice of mine i could quite easily have just not uploaded today uh, and gone about my my day had a day in manchester and, and started up uploading again tomorrow it just didn't sit right with me that that, that was the case and, and that is it's not even primarily ea's fault because i think i think the issue yesterday wasn't an ea issue it, i know it was only ea services that were down um, but from what, what I understand, which is limited, let's be real, but from what I understand with how networking works and things like that, it seemed like they were being DDoSed. Um, and so it, it wasn't necessarily their fault, right? And, and so they can't necessarily be held responsible for that. What I tweeted, I, I tweeted a little bit in jest yesterday about um, the only thing that EA were going to give as rewards was 2,000 points back. Right. And uh, I said, in my opinion, EA won't extend weekend league again. They will simply refund everyone's 2K entry points instead. And the reason why I thought that is because I've we've had it before where they just refunded everyone's points. Initially, I was sitting there and thinking to myself like that. That's that's not the best they can do, but I understand it. And then I got to thinking about who who the downtime impacted with the fact that you couldn't get online at all. And then even if you could get online, matchmaking was disabled online and offline. And um, they, I started thinking about it more and more. And the, the volume of people that missed out was crazy. People missed out on squad battles. Uh, in fact, I, I wonder if the amount of games played on squad battles is far, far less for last week than it has been in a long time. I don't know. Do squad battles have top 100 from last week? Yeah, previous events. So somehow, I guess just these were the people that, like, basically, if you were online you could stay in so i guess these people managed to play their games oh no wait is that last week to this week no yeah this is last week i guess these people were just online enough to manage to play their games or, or however but you can see here we're at 41s and 43s and 44s uh and i assume that we'll actually go into the 30s for some of the top 100 guys there you go that guy there uh 37 um and and people couldn't finish their games and, and people missed out on not just top 100 but people missed out on elite ones and elite two ranks because they weren't able to log in and get their rewards and so it impacted squad battles players i also was sitting there thinking to myself you know obviously uh for me and for personal reasons for selfish reasons giving foot champs rewards as compensation would be nice you know somebody said why not just give everybody the lot the, the best result that they ever got as rewards as compensation on top of wherever they finished why not give people uh, their average result throughout the year, including where they finished this week? Uh, why not give people where they finished last week as a bonus set of results? Uh, and then some people also said, why not just reduce the threshold for everywhere? So just reduce it by four wins across the board. Elite 1 now becomes 23. Elite 2 becomes 21. Elite 3, 19. Gold 1, 16. Gold 2, 13. Gold 3, 10. And so because you didn't have enough time to fulfill your game commitment because the servers were down for so long on Friday and Sunday night, you would get boosted up in the rankings by that as a good counterbalance for a one-week thing. And so there was that. But then I also started seeing people message me, like, hey, no, I don't play foot champs ever. And so these 2,000 qualification points mean nothing for me. And 
what happens is I only get to play this game on a weekend and I always play rivals. And so now I don't get the opportunity to play my rivals games this week. So I'm going to miss out on rivals rewards because of it. And I hadn't even considered that. I hadn't considered the fact that people won't even get to play rivals and complete weekly objectives and just play to complete for rewards because they also weren't able to get on the game. Um, and so ev everybody got screwed over. And the only compensation, if you can call it that, that EA gave was 2,000 points entry to people for fuck champions. And that's it. They, they didn't reward people that play squad battles. And they didn't reward people that play fuck rivals. And they didn't reward people that play fuck champions. And here's why. To, to get 2,000 points now, especially since they've changed the division rivals structure and, and bumped everyone up loads of divisions, isn't a difficult achievement. Especially if you play actively in Rivals, you most likely had your 2,000 points already banked from rewards, right? So what happens is, is on Mondays, when Foot Champs has ended, I'll enter back in with the 2,000 points that I already had banked. And then on Thursdays, when I get rewards, I get 2,000 more points. And now I'm already safe again for next week, just in case I don't play or whatever. And so, A, for most people, they would have had the points banked regardless. But also, because of weekly objectives that requires three wins in rivals under a stipulation of team rating or of, of team in general uh, for a swap deals player, score using Dutch players in three separate rivals wins, th this in itself is going to like mean that people that are working towards this objective are also just going to achieve the rivals points without the need of EA. So what EA really gave back was absolutely nothing and so that in itself was a bit of a kick in the teeth but ea to then tweet hey fifa fans we want to apologize for the various connectivity issues that have impacted your ability to play fifa over the weekend the issue is now resolved and we want to inform you on the next steps as we have already extended the weekend league by 24 hours we won't be extending it further since it would prevent us from distributing rewards prior to the start of the next weekend league so they're, they're essentially saying that we're not going to give you another day to play games because we require three days to prepare rewards. Now, I know that they used to have this whole vetting rewards scenario, but the, there was, throughout 17, 18, and 19, there's been cheaters in the leaderboards, specifically on PC, but also at times on console, and they've never been removed from the reward structure. And so unless they're banning bot accounts that are farming games in some scenario or another, that are attaining rewards, and that takes three days to achieve, then using uh, rewards as the reason why they won't give an extra day to play the games is a bit of a cop-out, right? It's a bit of a cop-out. They continue on. However, all Foot Champions players who have registered this weekend will have their Foot Champions points reset back to 2,000. Our goal is to provide a fun safe and secure place for our players to play fifa we're sorry that these issues have prevented that from being the case for many of you this weekend like it is it is just about champs it's just ea's tweeting however all fuck champions players so they don't care if you're not in fuck champs they don't care about you if you're in rivals or if you play online singles matches or if you played uh offline seasons or if you play right um squad battles they don't care if you play champs though hey you get some points back that you probably didn't need and so that, that genuinely was a, a little bit of a kick in the teeth, right? To then see Madden EA, it, it, like it, it's triggered me to the level where I'm, I had to laugh, actually. And, and it's, it shouldn't be that deep because it's just a video game, right? But Madden Ultimate Team tweeted, Quick update. Weekend League has been extended until tomorrow, meaning Tuesday. Solo battles are not extended. The new week features double rewards. So basically, for those of you that got screwed over because you couldn't do your, you know, your, your, I, I assume solo battles is the same as squad battles and offline section. For those of you that couldn't do it, oh, EA, have EA actually done it? No, that's just uh, two, yeah. So yeah, for those of you that couldn't do it, you've now got double rewards. Now, if EA gave double rewards here, a lot of people would be like, do you know what? Fair play. Thank you very much, EA. We respect that. You've rewarded us now. I missed out last week. I'm going to work just as hard this week to get back there because I'm going to get twice twice the rewards. 
And the same thing for rivals. For rivals, they could just give us double rewards for rivals. What was really interesting about Madden Ultimate Team and why it triggered me more than it should have done isn't necessarily because of that little piece there. One of the Madden community managers tweeted, um, Hey, Mutt community, due to the server downtime issues this weekend, the Mutt development team has extended the weekend league until tomorrow. Again, literally meaning until Tuesday. This extension will delay rewards going out this week, weekly and monthly. Once we have more details, we'll let players know. He then continues to say, uh, unfortunately, there is not a way to extend last week's solo battles at this time, but this week's solo battles will, reply, will, will provide double rewards. And what EA have done for FIFA is said, hey, we can't extend this because we don't want to delay rewards. What Madden have said is, hey, we will extend this, but this will delay rewards. Now, some people will probably be unhappy at delayed rewards, but I personally would have preferred an extra day after the downtime, the peak downtimes. Friday from about 9 p.m. UK until Saturday morning at about 11 a.m. it was down. Now, that is a huge portion of time for the world to be playing FIFA. In NA, that's, that's their Friday evening, that's peak time for Europe, Saturday morning and Saturday lunch, a very peak time where a lot of people wouldn't be able to play. And then Sunday from about 5 p.m. all the way up until about 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. Again, a Sunday night where a lot of people just get in their final games. It's just down. And so I'm sure a lot of people would have been like, would have preferred an extra day Monday and an extra day Tuesday and got rewards on Friday or even Saturday or even Sunday. I'm sure people would have been okay with that. But EA FIFA were like, we can't do that because we don't want to delay our rewards. And Madden were like, yeah, we'll do it. But just so you know, rewards are going to be delayed. And... And it's, it's shocking to me that the same company can have two wildly varying uh, outcomes. Now, of course, some people say, you know, Madden community, they, they need their players more because they're a smaller community. Uh, FIFA is so big, it, it doesn't, you know, people are going to show up anyway. But that, that should never be an excuse. It should never be a case of, oh, FIFA's so big, they don't, they don't even care to hold on to their players Madden, they really need to hold on to their player base, so they need to do everything they can to, to please them. I, find, I just find it to be quite disgusting. Um, and so I'm, I'm very, very frustrated right now um, that once again, people that play this game have just been completely disregarded and seen as dollar signs, haven't been rewarded or awarded or compensated in any regard for anybody that missed out. Like, I can't imagine if you were a guy that goes to top 100 squad battles and you missed out because you just couldn't play a set of games. How furious would you be? You know, like, and, and what do you get as compensation for that? Literally nothing. And, and it's uh, just, it just, it, it just bugs me so much. But the issue is, is that complaining won't, won't change anything. And again, we, I had a lot of people start tweeting me, man, you, you and other YouTubers should make a stand. You, you should boycott FIFA, boycott FIFA points. And, and that will show EA. It won't show EA anything. Because I, I tried to explain it in, in the sense of uh, the kickoff glitch, right? But I'll explain to you guys briefly. The amount of people that watch content creators in general is nowhere near, right? Nowhere near a big enough portion of people to make an impact on EA. The, the people that spend the most money as, as a collective are the casuals. The guys that spend 10 here or 15 there, 20 there and 25 here on payday but there's tens of millions of them. They're the guys that keep lining EA's pockets. The guys that spend thousands and thousands, there's so few of them that if you actually remove those from the pool, you wouldn't even notice it. EA would be like, wait, what happened? Oh, nothing, Never mind. carry on. And what would have to happen is every content creator would have to get on board, which is just unlikely in the first place because this is people's lives. Now, there are, there are a few content creators that are in a stable enough financial position where they could afford to make different content or make no content and still live their lives. But there are a lot of content creators that rely on the income from YouTube and social media to pay their bills. And so that group of content creators just initially would be like, I, I just can't get on board because this pays my bills. And, and it's, in, it's, it's a bad situation, but that's, that's, the, that's the reality of the situation. There are also some content creators that just don't care enough about this. They don't care about the game so much. They care more about what content they can produce to make a living or just generally what content they can produce. There's a lot of people that don't even play foot champs. There's a lot of people that don't even play weekends on the weekend. So this didn't even bother them at all. And so there's a lot of content creators that wouldn't even get behind it because they just didn't want to get behind it. So initially, 
to, to make a stand as a, as a collective, as content creators, we would be fighting an uphill battle just to get everybody on board. On top of that, to then encourage millions, it is millions, but it's still not big enough pool of people, but to encourage millions of people to stop spending money on this game would be nearly impossible, if not impossible. Because what happens is, is if I say to you guys, guys, do not spend money on this game anymore, and then EA release team of the season and release 100k packs with a guaranteed team of the season in it you're gonna be like i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna buy it I, i'm only one person i don't matter it doesn't matter so to get to actually get people to not spend money on the game would be nearly impossible and then for the amount of people that don't spend money on the game to have a genuine impact to the economy of the game where it makes ea sit there and think oh crap we've got an issue is the next biggest problem because it just wouldn't happen what has to happen for this game for EA to, to really make dramatic changes is the, the, the core elements of the game have to break to the casual, not to the hardcore. Because if everybody's upset with this game, EA will have to make changes. But when it's such a small percent of people, even if it's 10% or 12% or 15%, it's not enough for EA to say, oh, okay, yeah, let, let's, let's do what they want. Because it doesn't impact nearly enough people for them to make a dramatic change. Now, I think a lot of people misunderstood a few of my tweets yesterday when I said like EA won't change anything unless everybody gets on board. That's not to say that they don't change things, but they change them at their own pace. So, you know, in FIFA 16, we didn't have squad battles. We didn't have uh, rivals. We didn't have champs. In FIFA 17, we have champs and squad battles. That wasn't off the back of everybody getting upset. That is something that EA were calculated in, something they wanted in the game, something they've been working towards. The same thing for uh, fight rivals this year something that was calculated, something that they put in at their, their best time, at their opportunity after their testing. For them to make a dramatic, holy crap, we've got to sort this out right now, like Battlefront did with the loot boxes and the way you got the characters where they just shut the whole thing down, reworked it, and then brought it back. For that to happen, everybody has to get upset. Everybody. And the casuals that play this game, and I mean real casuals, right? The guys that play this on the weekend here or there, an hour after work if they're lucky, if their wives let them, like those kind of casuals, right? For those to get disenchanted with this game, the game has to be fully, fully broken. The problem is, is that the game is only really broken at a high level of FIFA. And, and I use the kickoff glitch to, to kind of explain that. And I'll also use court, uh, crossing for that as well, right? When you score a kickoff, or you can see the kickoff, you notice it a lot because it happens a lot. The reason why it happens a lot to you is because of the level of FIFA that you play at. At that level of FIFA, no matter what level you're at and where, how bad you think you might be comparatively to what you see on YouTube or comparatively to what you see um, on Twitch or just on social media in general, even if you're in like Division 3 or Division 2 right now, you're a high-end FIFA player. I think, the, the, I think there was something on PlayStation Network. In fact, let me go to my trophies now where only 4% of people, and it might be a bit more now that EA have changed the um, reward structure, but there was something that only 4% of people have made it to Division 4 or something like that. Um, where are we? Um, played 20 games. Achieved Division 4 in FIFA Ultimate Team Rivals. 4.7%. And that is with EA changing the reward structure, right? So it was even harder before, and now that's where we're at. So if you're even in the new Division 4, you are in the top 5% of FIFA players in the world, right? So that, that's the level of we're talking about. If you're in Division 4 or above, if you even play champs, if you get Silver 3 or better, you're such a good FIFA player. I know you're not good comparatively to what you might face that get Gold 1 or get Elite 3 or get Top 100, but you're such a good FIFA player compared to everybody else that you're able to manipulate the game in a way that casuals just don't even know. Because when you kick off, you know that passing it backwards then running forwards and lacquer kettering your wee-wee off all the way down the field is an effective way to create chances. You also know that passing it to your, you know, your guy at the edge of the box and then playing it left or right and trying to get down a wing for a cross is an effective way to score goals. You know that passing it right and then passing it in immediately forwards will create angles to get in behind the back line straight away. So you abuse that. And although you don't score every time and you don't concede every time, you score and concede far more than you feel you should based on what you know about real football. The issue is, is that the casual, 
they don't even know about that. They don't even know what that skill move is. They don't know about those gameplay mechanics. They don't know how to abuse those patterns. So what they'll do is they'll pass it back and they'll pass it back and they'll pass it to their center back and they'll pass it to their fullback. And before you know it, the, the team has kind of like set itself now in a way where the game is just in a natural flow in, and instead of in a state of where it's like from, um, from a set piece or a set play. And so now the opportunity to score or concede from kickoff has basically been eliminated, right? And so because it's concentrated at such a high level of FIFA where these issues arise is that what the way they look at it is this if a hundred thousand people came to them and said hey man kickoffs are broken there's just so many issues with kickoff i score way too many i concede way too many this really isn't what i expect this really isn't something that should happen in the game ea will be like okay let's go and have a look at the numbers ea don't look at the numbers of the top five percent of people and how they score or concede kickoff goals. They look at all of the people and how they score or concede kickoff goals and across all of the game modes. Journey, head-to-head, uh, -head, the skill, the the um, the new games where you, where you like the, the red card challenge thing and stuff like that. They look at all of it and they'll say, no, we're, we're very happy with the number of goals that are scored immediately after kickoff. It's fully in line with where we think this should be with our game. If you said to them, can you just look at the top 5%, they'd say, oh, yeah, we can see an issue there. But even then, they wouldn't want to fix that. Because it's like, look, this is an issue that is concentrated to such a small number of people that for us to rewrite the whole thing, when it doesn't even bother most of the player base, we would rather put our resources, our time, our money, our energy into something else. And so that's the, that's the same thing. It, it's the reason why nothing will change unless everybody is globally upset. And why any kind of content creator or any kind of like uprising from, from social media will have little to no impact at all in the immediate term. It might have impact long term. They might be like, look, we can't have this happening again and again and again because then people will start to get upset. So we've got to put uh, remedies in place so that the next time this happens, we're able to rectify it quicker or, or please them better, right? So it, it, might, it might state changes down the line. But for people that are angry now and for people that just want a change now and want that want EA to, to hear you now, they they see it, they hear it, they just won't act on it until it in, until it doesn't impact just this group of people, but it impacts this group of people, right? It needs to impact everybody to, to have a change. And the same thing can be said for crossing. El Tornado crosses and Bolassi flick crosses and scoop volley crosses are so broken. We know it. it's all you see at the top level of FIFA in the championships, on Twitch, at top 100 and elite level players. All they do is find down the wings, El Tornado, boom, back post to Cristiano Ronaldo or Team of the Year Mbappe or 93 or 92 Gareth Bale or to whatever prime icon moment they've got sitting there, whether it's Eusebio or Pulit or whoever it may be, and they head it home. And it's not an attractive way to play FIFA. And there's an issue there. But once again, if you said to EA, hey, this is unacceptable. This shouldn't happen. It happens way too often. EA would look at how everybody scores goals. And they'd be like, oh, I mean, like, El Tornado crosses have scored such a minimal amount in the global scheme of things that it's not something we care to fix, right? And so because of that, that will be, again, something that although they can see, okay, a high level of FIFA, this is an issue we've got to fix. It's not an issue they'll fix until next year's game because it's not a priority because it doesn't impact everybody. It only impacts a small concentrated group of people. And that's the same with these boycotts. If, 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 I, if I'm able to even uh, impact everybody that watches my videos, that's not even close to enough people to make EA be like, holy crap, this is an issue. It's not even enough to them, for them to be like, did you see that? It's just not enough because what happens is, is when team of the season comes out on Friday, no matter who says what or where, it comes down to the, the, the person themselves and whether or not they, they actually have it in them to want to make a, a change to the game. And if you want to make a change to this game, and I said this during Fix FIFA, and I got a lot of stick for it and a lot of heat for it, and, but it's my true honest opinion. If you want to make a true change for FIFA, not spending FIFA points isn't the answer. Not buying the game is the answer. Ta telling them with your, with your number and saying that your product isn't worth my money 
not your microtransactions aren't worth my money, is how it works. Because if 100,000 people bought FIFA, right, EA now have 100,000 people that they've got all year to try and convince to spend money on microtransactions. All year, dropping promos, dropping special cards, dropping upgrade packs, dropping team of the seasons and SBCs and, and whatever else comes with it. For people to be like, damn, I, I just want that player now. I, I just, I gotta go and spend some money. I gotta go and get him. If those 100,000 people just didn't buy the game in the first place, A, they don't have those sales. And so they can't use those in sales figures to help pr promote their game and pitch it to advertisers and meet their targets uh, for their directors and investors. But B, if you don't have the game, you can't spend on microtransactions. So by not buying the game, that's how you make your stand. That's how you make your true impact. Now, once again, the biggest issue we have there through every stretch of people is number one, casuals don't think there's an issue with this game. I have friends, personal friends, that love this game. They think it's insane. And when I try to explain to them, this game is just so broken at like a core level, they don't know what an El Tornado is. They don't know how to abuse an El Tornado cross. They play FIFA as if it's a football game. And when silly things happen, because they don't play the game enough to notice that those things happen on a really regular, really consistent basis, they just think, oh, remember when we saw that and that one, you know, people... You'll see those games where people have like 75% possession, 40 shots, and lose 1-0 to a guy who had one shot. And then people are like, yeah, well, did you see Celtic against Barcelona? Yes, the, the anomalies happen in real life too, but the anomalies in, happen, in real life are anomalies. When you play this game a lot, hundreds of games, let alone thousands of games, those anomalies pop up far, far more often than they do in real life to the point where you're like, okay, this isn't an anomaly anymore. This is just a broken game. Because the casual group of people play it so rarely and, and so sporadically, those anomalies are still regarded as anomalies that they can laugh off or not even recognize. And so once again, it, it won't impact that bottom line of people. And then also in terms of not buying the game, for hardcores and, and for content creators, there is no reasonable alternative. As bad as this game ha ha is in its moments, because there are issues with it, I still love this game, don't get me wrong, but as bad as this game is in, in, in its moments, it is still the best that there is. By a long shot. People say to me all the time, man, Pez's gameplay is so much better. And then they also say, all we want is better gameplay. Well, if you want better gameplay, there is supposedly a game out there with better gameplay. Why aren't you all playing it? I don't know. Because if that's, if that's what you want out of a football game, there is supposedly a better game out there. I personally don't think Pez has better gameplay. I think Pez has as many issues as Beaver does. But the, the issue that comes along with it is in the same vein as what we have in FIFA with casuals, if you go and play Pez for a couple of weeks, you're going to think that's a great game because you, you haven't played it enough to really understand and learn the, the problems with the game. However, if you go to Pez's Reddit, all you see is people complaining about the game. If you go to... I follow the, Pez, like the top Pez guys, top Pez YouTubers and content creators on Twitter, and I constantly see them moaning about the game. And so you got to look at it in that manner again, that when you play Pez just a little bit here or there, you're just like, holy crap, this is great. Like no El Tornado crosses, no La Croquetas. But if you actually played it to a deep level, you would learn to hate it because it is, it is so far away from where FIFA is, let alone Ultimate Team and uh, licensing and getting just, you know, the full package that what you get with EA. And, and so as I say, as bad as this game can be in its moments... This is still the best there is by far. And it's unfair for me to say that I hate this game because I love this game. And it's unfair for me to say that I want this game to die or I want people to suffer or anything like that. I just want fairness from, from the community and from the managers. I, I, I want fairness from EA Sports to, to repay the people that have made them a company that is worth $40 billion dollars. To, to make them into a company that will generate billions of dollars of revenue. And it all stems from this game mode. FIFA Ultimate Team. That's where it took EA from down here as, as a company to up here as a company. It's put them up there with the likes of the Googles and the Amazons and, and, uh, and, and Teslas and companies like that that are real leaders in, in the industry. EA is now up there as a real leader in the industry because of this game mode. And so when something happens over the over the weekend like it did to be told we'll give the foot champs guys their points back is not acceptable however 
trying to make a stand against a beer moth is not gonna work and some people are like oh man you don't know unless you try you're like that guy that says oh i'm not gonna vote because one vote doesn't matter it's it's not even on the same scale as that right every vote matters in in elections and in your wherever you in your town whatever you may be voting for your your uh school uh king and queen or, or whoever it may be right your your the dean uh the, the you know the the head uh the head hallway monitor or whatever it may be every vote counts in this instance, through me complaining about this game for years and years and years, and from me trying to make a stand on many occasions, and from me just understanding how the elements of the game work and how it is more than just a, you either vote or you don't vote, and your vote either counts or it doesn't. That's, that's not the depth of this. Because for me, if, if I stand up and try to make a change, I'm not just trying to make a change for me. I have to influence other content creators uh hardcores and casuals and i don't have the reach to get there and that's why in in uh you know in politics they campaign and they spend months and millions campaigning to to make the difference to get the vote i don't have months or millions because this is a game that resets every 12 months so if i campaign if i start a campaign now for us to get rewarded for what's just happened on this weekend i would have to spend the next six months building up a, a, a plan and a budget and, and you know going out there and trying to get the general public's interest and the general public just don't care because for them this game is more than good enough so it's you know when people say oh man you're not even trying because you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you it's not even about that it's, i just understand that that there, there will be no immediate impact unless everybody is already upset i can't inspire anger in people that don't care and that are happy with the product i can't convince somebody that loves this game to hate this game on my behalf especially when they don't even watch my videos or, or don't even come onto social media again going back to my own personal experiences i have friends out there that love fifa that know who i am and what i do but don't even watch youtube they're like oh you still do that you know you're still on youtube still doing that thing i'm like yes yeah, pretty going pretty well it's like yeah, yeah that's cool and I'm like, do you watch any videos? Like, you on Twitter? Nah, dude, it's not for me. Like, I go on Facebook every now and then, but it's not really for me. And so, how 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 can you expect to change something when you can't even reach the what what did EA quote last year? Forty five million people played this game. I get like three hundred thousand views on a great video. Like, I, I might hit in terms of unique viewers, one and a half to two million unique viewers per month. Right. So I'm looking at five percent of the viewer base as an absolute maximum over the course of a month, right? So I don't know, like, to people that just expect content creators to, first of all, as I said, you know, just be like, okay, I don't, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna martyr myself for this cause it is just not reasonable in itself. But then but to expect the content creators to actually generate enough buzz to the point where it sends shockwaves down the entire population of the game, it's just unreasonable it's just unreasonable um and so that's where i'm at with it and so oh I, I wanted to do that whilst doing sbcs but you know i i got caught up i got caught up in what i wanted to talk about um i, I just wanted to give my viewpoint and and to to, uh, to let people kind of like know that when i say i'm not gonna tell people to stop buying fifa points or tell people to stop buying fifa it's not because i don't care it's not because i like i don't want ea to like being EA's bad books it like some guy literally a games journalist tweeted me today saying that of course I won't stand up because my end game is to work for EA what are you talking about you're a games journalist and you think that I want to work for EA EA first of all would have to pay me obscene amounts of money to work for them and second of all that what role would I have in EA a community manager like like th that that's not to take away from what the community managers do but that's what i'm saying like what do i what qualifications do i have to work for ea i couldn't be a developer i i, I couldn't be a coder for them I, i'm not a marketer like i can't go into marketing i can't go into their finance department i couldn't go into their legal department what opportunities would there be for me with my skill set and what i've done and where I've been through my life, what opportunities are there for me to work for EA? It would be a community manager. That would be the my role in EA. That would be like, 
Like maybe if maybe I'd be the postman or, or the, the, the guy that gets the coffees for people because that's the extent of what I could do for EA. And so when a games journalist says your end goal, your end goal is to work for EA, I just think, man, what chance have we got when the people that are supposed to know what they're talking about don't know what they're talking about and, and, are, and are shunning content creators, specifically me because I'm the one that rises to debate. I'm the one that responds to these people, right? But specifically me, but what, what chance have I got when even those guys think that my end goal is to work for EA and that's why I'm not making a stand? Like, if you actually, if you're a games journalist, talk to me about it. Right, right, like, say, hey, let's do a piece on this. Let's, let's have an interview. Let me ask you the tough questions and get your answers. And then you'll, then you'll understand who I am and what I want from this and where I'm going with this. Rather than just being like, oh, you're a content creator. You, work, you, know, you, you make FIFA videos. You obviously want to work for EA as your end goal. So that's why you won't do anything. And I'm like, do you know me? I, I've been complaining about, if you go back as far as FIFA 11... I've been complaining about this game since day. I've been complaining about I this, this is where like this game, this, this community sometimes just gets the better of me in, in occasions. People are like, oh man, you never stand up for us. You never speak on our behalf. You're just in it for yourself. You're just in it for the money. And then I start complaining about the game and people are like, man, you, all you do is complain about this game. If you don't like it, stop playing it. I'm like, I can't win. I can't win. You, you either want me to, to, to fight your cause or you don't. But you can't say when, it, you know, on, when you're upset, you want me to fight on your behalf. But when you're okay with something, I'm complaining if I'm upset with it. And that's not okay. That's not acceptable. But to, 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 to say that me, I'm someone who doesn't call out this company when something's wrong is just crazy. I have got so many, I've got, I think I've uploaded like 4.2K videos, probably 5K videos between both my channels, 5,000 videos. There's probably about at least a thousand of them where I'm just bitching about the game. This is another one. This is me just complaining about the game. This is me complaining about the situation that we're in. This is me unhappy with the treatment that we've been getting. And I'm going to be talking here. This video might reach 60, 80 on a good day, 100,000 people. And you know what people are going to do after this? There will, there might be one or five or ten people that are like, no, do you know what? I am going to be part of the change. I am going to make a stand, and I'm going to stop buying this product, and I'm going to stop, you know, giving money to them through microtransactions. But no, people are just going to be like, yeah, you tell him, and that's it. That's it. Then they're just going to go, oh, team of the season's coming. I want some FIFA points for that. It, it, it's, it just doesn't, it, it's impossible, man. It's impossible, right? It's impossible um, to, to make the real change from where I'm sitting. And I know people think, like, people are like, oh, you underestimate how many people you can reach. I think they underestimate how many people don't care that the, the state of this game is in or, or how, how many people play this game in the first place to the point where the people that I reach, whilst on a social aspect, <clears throat> is a lot. But on a global aspect, is almost is negligible. You know, we're, we're talking at 3% or 4% or 5% of the entire user base, right? That's, that, that's genuinely what we're talking about. 3, 4, 5% of the entire user base. That's where I'm at. That's what, I, that's what I can achieve. That's what I can reach. And that is not enough to, to, to just promote positive change. It's not enough. And I, as I say, I know a lot of people would would just disagree with me but i've been doing this for a long time ea have been making mistakes for a long time they've been doing some great things for a long time as well i'm not just going to sit here and say it's all mistakes it's not um but they've been making mistakes for a long time they've been they've been listening to this community for a long time and as i say what they will do is they will it, it they they will like engage with change at their pace and so what's happened this weekend as i say it's not necessarily futile to, to make no noise. And that's why I still complain about it. Even though I don't think that what I'm saying here today will have any immediate change. It won't impact things tomorrow or next week. This, what will happen, what, what this week or this weekend will have uh, caused is it will have caused EA to never have to want to go through that again because they don't want to say sorry. The, the, the fact that they apologize on their Twitter account is huge. The fact that they said we're sorry, 
But the downtime, they never apologize because when they apologize, they're admitting fault and they don't want to admit fault. Right. So the, the fact that we got an apology is genuinely huge. They don't want to do that again. They're, 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 they're investors and their shareholders and, and their moguls up top, the CEOs and such. They, they don't want to say sorry to viewers because that 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 then says that they were wrong and they don't want to be wrong. And, and uh, as I said, in this instance, I, I don't even know if it was their fault. Like they got DDoS or something like it, it, it wasn't. It was down for so long that it wasn't just uh, some small issue with the EA servers. There, there was, as I say, my my understanding of networking and stuff is super limited. Um, but I know enough to know that how long that took to fix and the fact that it happened twice over the course of the same weekend for a prolonged period of time, it wasn't just a small thing and it wasn't something on their end where it's like, let me just flick it on and flick it back off again and it'll fix itself. It wasn't. I, I, could, I could just... I, I, you know, like I say, I know enough about it to, to know that much. Um, so, you know, they, they don't want to they don't want to say sorry. So the, what, you know, us complaining, whilst it might feel like it has no impact, and, and whilst I still think that they've handled it incredibly wrong with how they've rewarded people um, or awarded people or, or, you know, what they've said to try and say sorry to people, I don't think they've done a good enough job with that. But what this will have done and, and what us talking about this and getting upset about this and, and fighting for this, what this will do is it will cause change long term. It will cause them to, as I say, to not want to go through this ever again. It will cause them to put measures in place to stop this from happening again. And, it will, and, and, and if it does happen more often than it doesn't happen, at that point people, the public will start to take note, you know, that they'll be like, oh damn, FIFA's down again, FIFA's down again, FIFA's down again, I can't play again, I can't play offline again, I'm going to go and play Pez, because at that casual level, it, the, 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 the kind of the game that you play is less relevant, um, and because as I say, they don't really know or feel or understand the issues that come with the game, and so for them, if, if you know, if FIFA servers are constantly down, they're going to be like, oh, let me just go and play another game. So even if it's not PES, even if it's just another game, that's not what EA want because next year they won't buy FIFA because they're like, oh, FIFA's that game that always has the dodgy servers, man. Don't even get that game. And like, let's, let's, go, and, let's go and find ourselves uh, another game, a better game. Let's go and find a game that we can enjoy. Let's go and play Fortnite or I would say Apex, but it's run on EA servers. Apex was even down. So um, yeah, you know, there, there, there's no there's no like there, there's no way that ea will allow this to happen long term but there definitely needs to be in my personal opinion um more just more for the people that have supported this game for so many years have spent so much money on this game to just be slapped in the face with ea with like oh if, you, if you're a squad battles player or if you're an offline player in general or if you're a fuck rivals player, or if you play online singles with your pals, all of you guys, you get nothing back. Now that in itself is already terrible. But then to be like, for those of you that we do want to show something in, in return for and be like, we're really sorry this happened. You don't even get anything of worth back. It, like 2000 championship points or 2000 qualification points is literally worthless unless you have just started playing this game. In which case, you probably didn't have the points to qualify for foot champs anyway. So, so it, it, yeah, for me, guys, it's just, it, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like I've said it all. Uh, I feel like I've kind of explained where I stand with this. I'm sure some people will disagree with me. And, and I know some people will still think that it's my duty to stand up to EA and, and to, to be the martyr for the community. But I, I hope that you guys just can can understand and, and, and know that from my perspective, it's, it's not even about what i will gain or what i will lose from doing it it's it's about understanding the the change that it will or won't have and uh i i just i'm i i'm just certain I, because of me trying it in the past and because of me just just generally knowing and understanding this industry because i've been in this industry for so long i know that the the uh, the small amount of people that are truly impacted by server downtime is not enough for EA to, to bring drastic change immediately. Uh, and again, that's not to say that it won't cause change or, or that we shouldn't still speak up. Because uh, the, the, again, there was one guy on uh, Twitter yesterday 
that was calling me out for not speaking up at all. And, and I'm like, hey, like, I'm, I'm not not speaking up. I'm just not going to go and try and get behind some movement that I know will be unsuccessful. Um, oh, how do you know if it's unsuccessful if you don't try? Y you know, when you just know something, you know, and, and it's not that I know it because I didn't I, like because I it's not me just being arrogant. It's not me thinking that I know best and it's not me not wanting to try because, oh, no, what if EA don't want to work with me even more than they already don't work with me? Like, you know what I mean? It's not that. It, it, it's just because you know, you know. And I don't want to try and prove, like, some guys are like, oh, why don't you do it anyway? Just so that you can tell people, I told you so. I don't care to do that. I, I don't want to be a guy that's like, oh, let me just do it to prove to them that I was right so that I can go about my life. You, you either just have to accept what I kind of know as fact or you don't. But either way... It's not gonna. It's not gonna change anything. And as I say, like if you, if you, you watching this video right now, if you truly want to make an impact on how FIFA handle themselves in situations like this, don't buy their game next year. Buy, not buying microtransactions is not enough. You have to not buy their game. That's it. And if you buy their game, you are immediately part of the problem. Immediately. And so I'm part of the problem, and I know this, and I said this during the fixed FIFA movement. I'm part of the problem, but you're part of the problem. Everyone that buys a copy of FIFA is just part of the problem because at that point, EA have got what they want. They like at that point, buying buying the product is the scariest thing for them because once they once you once you own that product, them convincing you to spend on that product that's easy. That's bells and whistles, that's shiny cards and more promos. Look at this year. We had so many promos this year. I cannot wait to see the financials, which we won't probably see until 2021. But I can't wait to see the financials for um, FIFA 19 and how much money it made EA because it is going to be through the roof. They would have made so much money this year because of all these promos. And uh, what, what it comes down to is once you buy the game, once you know that's it, they've got you. And at that point, all they then have to do is try and convince you to spend money on microtransactions. And because of the way the gaming world has gone, because of the way the gaming industry is just blowing up and microtransactions are becoming normal in games. Like I, I remember back in the day, like when I used to play video games, oh, I would be scared to pay for something for, as an add-on. I'd be like, am I getting scammed here? Am I getting conned? Like, what what is this what's going on what you know what's actually happening uh to me with this game i'm not going to buy this team I'll, I'll wait until i have a few more players um but now if 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 you was like oh man i just like bought loads and loads of skins on fortnite last night people don't say what on earth are you doing why on earth would you spend your money on a virtual product that gives you no benefit in game at all what is what is your problem? They don't say that. They say, what skins did you get? Oh my God, I might get that one too. We can rock them together. We can have a lobby of all... Yo, Pete, Pete get some V-Bucks, Pete. Let's all wear this skin together. And Pete's like, hell yeah, let's, let's all wear this skin together, bros. All right. And that's what they do. And that, that's why EA don't care if you don't... If, if, you, if we make a stand about FIFA points... Because it's not about FIFA points. It's about FIFA. It's about the actual game itself. You, to make a stand, you've got to not buy the product. If you don't have the product, you can't spend on microtransactions. But if you buy the product and Jimmy's like, oh man, I packed Team of the Year Ronaldo today. I can't believe it. I was so lucky. He's so good. He's like, Pete, did you play with him? And Pete's like, no, of course I didn't play with him. He's 7 million coins. Dude, just try and get him, man. Try and get him. All right, let me open 12,000 FIFA points worth of promo packs and see if I can pack him too. And that's all they need. That's it. That, like that, that, that's, what it, that's all it takes to get people that have the game to spend the money is, is dangle the right carrot in front of them and they'll be like, yep, I'm, I'm, I'm paying for this one. This is, this is all me. I need this in my life. And that's how it is. And for those that, for those that, uh, you know, what want to make a true stand for those for those that want to make a true difference you have got to not buy the game because that will worry ea far far more if 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 they see if they see the um 
you know the 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 digits drop the sales drop if they if, if this year they sell 20 percent less compared to next year you know if, if this year they sell 40 million copies and next year it's 34 million copies they're gonna be like holy crap what has caused six million people to not buy this game that's a big difference that's an impact that they're gonna notice and be like okay we need to make some changes like this, things need to change but just some guys being like hey don't buy fever points anymore that's not going to change anything which i think i think we've already uh I've, I've done that thing where i've kind of said the same thing about a billion times again i, I do that a fair bit i apologize and i know i do it it's, it's not always easy um but uh yeah you know it's uh it, it's, it's a tough one it, it is a tough one it's not easy to find the right thing to do or the right thing to say or the right way to be what am i missing here i need to go and get a striker that's not um not Sergio Leon it's not easy to find the right answer because there are so many cogs uh in the wheel that it, it you you need more than like I say you need more than just one or some content creators to say yeah let, let's let's try and convince people to stop buying FIFA points that, that's it's just not enough now did I, am I a Real Betis or am I not a Real Betis? I am a Real Betis. Happy days. Um, so yeah, so what I wanted to do, like I said, is I wanted to talk about that whilst I was doing this League SBC. This video is going to be so long now. I'm Honestly, it's probably going to be like an hour long. I'm very interested to hear your guys' thoughts and your guys' feedback because that's important to me and it's important to EA. Again, even if it's not immediate, even if you don't think it's important, they, they value what we have to say uh, because it will dictate the future of the game, right? So don't stop fighting. Don't stop being upset. Don't don't just be like, oh, what's the point of even like discussing this? EA don't care. That that, that isn't the right way about it. But also don't expect immediate change and, and don't expect to pee for, for you know, th th this is a tough one for me to say. And I know how it's going to come across. I know how people are going to like read this or, and misinterpret this. But it, it's it's really not my or any other content creator's duty to fight your cause. And this is one of the biggest things that I had issues with over uh, the whole fixed FIFA movement. People are like, you just don't even care, man. You don't even care about your viewers. You don't even care about this game. All you care about is your, your, your pocket. All you care about is how much money you make. I mean, listen, I care about how much money I make. Money makes the world go round. I have kids. I have bills. I, you know, this is my career. This is my livelihood. Of course, it's important to me. But it's not important to the point where I would sacrifice every, every, all of my integrity for it, right? What what the problem is is that if you're if you're upset about something, for you then to expect me to agree with what you're upset with and then fight your case with you and for you, that's not acceptable. That's not a that's not what I'm here for. I'm just an entertainer. I'm well, you could debate that if you wanted, but I'm a content creator. I play this game. I love this game, and I like to make videos on this game. And I'm fortunate enough that I have uh, a lot of people that watch me, and I know that with that. I, I have a voice. I have a big voice that reaches a lot of people. I'm I'm not naive to that fact. I can see how much things can change in the market or with people's play styles just by me saying this works or that works or this guy's good or not. And, and it's the same for every content creator. But to to sit there and say, hey, you guy that I you know I don't know, I just watch and and uh, you know I engage with videos from time to time. You owe me because I say so. You owe me because I watch your videos. And so for that reason, I need you to get as angry as me about this EA thing and start doing something about it. They, they like, they, in, in, again, I know how this is going to come across. They don't owe you that. Content creators don't owe you the, the, the fight. That's not, it's not their fight. If, if you're upset with this game, you got to make a stand. If they're upset with this game, they got to make a stand. And with the whole Fix FIFA thing, I made a video on Fix FIFA explaining why I wouldn't get involved with Fix FIFA. I knew it would be a futile attempt. I knew it wouldn't work. And I didn't want to get behind a movement that what Fix FIFA was about, it was about scripting and handicap and momentum. And I don't believe in those things. And so when somebody's like, oh man, you've got to start getting involved with the Fix FIFA movement so that they can start stop handicapping my good team and stop scripting my games and i'm like no first of all it wouldn't work and second of all i don't believe that exists oh you only care about your money 
You don't care about what I care about. Well, no, I, actually, quite quite honestly, I don't care about what you care about because what you seem to care about is not in line with what I seem to care about. And so I find it weird that, as I say, you know, that 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 people will come and say to a content creator, "Hey, man, I have this problem with EA," and because you also play this game, it's now your problem, and I expect you to fight about it. No. That's, that's, you know, akin to someone walking up on the street and saying, hey, man, that guy over there, I don't like him. And that means you don't like him because he's a piece of, you know what I mean? He is an asshole. And so because I think he's an asshole and you're a big dude, you also probably think he's an asshole. So go and fight him for me. No, I'm not going to fight that guy for you because I don't think he's an asshole. And so you, you've got to fight. It's, it's got to be the, the cause has to be the same and, and the... The end goal has to want to be the same. And with with this new thing where everyone's trying to like get involved in an uprising against EA, people don't even know what they're angry about. And and they're, ang they're angry that it, champs didn't get extended. So what do you want me to do? Convince people to stop spending FIFA points now and hope that champs gets extended? What's that going to achieve? Let's say, excuse me, let's say EA did extend champs. Where, what, where? I don't understand where you think that's going to benefit anything because me making a stand. If I made a video, if this video is me saying, "Guys, screw FIFA, man! Like th we hate FIFA. We're not playing FIFA until we get champs extended." Okay, it's already too late. They're not extending champs. Now, now, what am I fighting for? Now, what's the cause for? You got to make a stand, man, because you're a content creator. You got to make a stand. You, you got to, you got to show them. That, that we have voices about what we want better servers okay but again do you understand that better servers or more servers doesn't inherently fix the issue that we have here today because it's a it's more more to a point of if it was a ddos attack or if if it was an attack of any description more servers wouldn't Fix the problem. The DDoS would still have blocked the threads, and it still would have been. An, it still would have been. There still would have been downtime this weekend. And if it wasn't a DDoS attack, if it was a genuine EA issue, more servers that have a problem will still break. Just because there's more, it doesn't mean it works. That's like me saying, okay, I have one PC, and my video renders. 15 minutes if it's 20 minutes long if i have two pcs it should render in seven and a half minutes am i right no because you can't render the one video on both pcs at time so more doesn't isn't necessarily the answer better is the answer having a better infrastructure having better uh better models that's the answer now again for them to invest in that for them to spend millions hundreds of millions of dollars on better or more servers and again I, I don't know the ins and outs of servers and how they work necessarily i i know a limited amount based on research through fix fifa and, and a few other uh campaigns that have come up here and there that you know people have got upset about and i've, I've like looked into a bit of a server server information and, and how they work and stuff um I, I don't know like all that much on it and and if i'm saying something blatantly wrong Feel free to just be like, actually, dude, that's just not true at all, right? But from what I understand is n people people just want better servers and they think that EA buying more servers is the answer. But again, it, it, even if that was the answer for the small portion of people that are upset, if that's not the... If, if that won't help the, the complete player base, I don't remember if I have Soriano or not, then why why would EA do it? And and that's where sadly it comes down to business, right? EA are a business. They're a for-profit organization. They have investors. They have sponsors. They have uh, targets that they have to meet. They have directors and CEOs. There's a lot going on in that company more than just caring about FIFA, right? And that's just a fact. And if 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 I went, you know, if I was working at EA because that's my end goal, you know, supposedly. And I say to EA, hey, man, we should spend 100 million on servers. Man, think about those people that will have smooth gameplay. Ooh, they'll love it. And then EA goes, okay, I hear what you're saying. 
how many people are impacted by servers like the sum and that i don't know like i actually couldn't even give you a real answer i don't know how many people have i, I know how many people say that they have issues with servers I, i've experienced server issues myself i know that people in the australian regions and people in north and south america have uh, relatively bad server server troubles but i don't know i i don't have an exact figure for you for people that have issues with servers i just don't have it i don't know if it exists i don't have it if it does exist i don't know and so when we get to a point where it's like okay so how many people are affected let let's say as as an ea employee you could say okay so it would improve the the um playability of around 15 to 18 percent of our user base okay and what about the other uh you know 85 to 87 percent yeah they're they're already happy they, they don't complain about servers it doesn't impact their gameplay they're casuals they, they they don't they don't they don't know what button delay is they don't understand what button delay is they don't feel it when passes are going astray and so now I'm sitting there thinking, okay, you're now almost convincing me to the point where I don't want to invest in new servers. Because if if you would have said to me, oh, wait, am I getting the wrong club here? Oh, I was getting Valencia players. That's my bad. Um, if you would say to me, um, oh, you can get yourself some, uh, some new servers and that 15 to 18% of people will spend 50 to 80% more revenue, you'd be like, okay, now we have a reason to want to pay for these servers. But if the people are still going to spend the money, EA aren't going to improve the servers because it, do it doesn't benefit them financially. It's not, it's, not a, it's, not a cost effective. it's not cost effective to EA to just improve those servers. By the way, we've done 14 of the teams. That, just to go away from this for a second, probably for, forever because I've just been ram I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually in a point of rambling now where I'm, actually, I'm talking about nothing ultimately, right? Um... I had 870,000 coins and just Huesca to do. And I thought to myself, this would be a good test for this new system that we're trying out this week. I bought Huesca instead of grinding them and instead of doing upgrade packs, and instead of doing the minor league SBCs to hopefully hit a an, an Huesca player, I bought the Huesca players. I'm down to 795,000. So with the other players that we bought and the Huesca players, I've still got five teams left. Huesca again, Valladolid, Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, Barcelona. But we've got 15 packs to open now. If I can start putting, getting back towards 870, 880,000 coins from these packs, I'm kind of showing that it's, it's, a, it's good and effective and efficient to do it without the minor leagues because the, I've done it with the worst team and the worst players. Um, but yeah, um, you know, ju ju just, to, just to kind of like wrap up on this, this, whole, this whole thing, right? Did I open one pack already? Did I open? I remember packing because it. Oh, I did. I opened it at the end of the end of doing the whole thing. Um, you know, just just to, just to kind of end on on the whole thing, on the whole piece. Um, I, I, I'm happy to complain about this game as much as possible, but I'm not gonna boycott and and be a martyr to my own career and my family for a cause that I don't think has merit. And that's, that's just the long and the short of it. I don't personally think that me making a video and making a stand and saying, hey guys, stop buying this game, stop buying FIFA points, don't spend any money on Team of the Season. I don't think it will, it will have an impact because I don't have enough reach and the problem isn't that deep to the general public. And so, I, as I say, I'm not going to go and sacrifice everything that I've worked so many years to build up for a cause that I don't think will work and I don't believe in. And there might be a content creator out there that will do that. I'd love to meet them. I'd love to have a chat with them. Uh, you know, I'd love to love to sit down and see what their plans are. And then, 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 you know, you got some traction. Maybe, maybe some things change. But until then, this game's not in a bad enough state. This game isn't even in a bad state in many regards. But this game's not in a bad enough state to make that kind of change, in my opinion. Um, now this video, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know what you guys will take away from this video. I don't know if you enjoyed this. I don't know if this has left a lot of people annoyed and frustrated that 
you know the the content creator won't stand up to ea and and i know i know it's not about that and i think a lot of you guys know it's not about that uh, oh walk out what are we saying ea man of the match show me oh it's wait oh it's dabu let's go dudes 86 rated dabu that's a good card that is if he gets a team in the season card that'll be a really nice card um let's go with that walk out the one rare man Four star, four star. Really nice stats. What's he selling for right now? Is he actually up at like 50s and 60s? Damn, they did crash hard. He's back down at 20k. They discard at 15. I'll hold on to him, man. I'm, uh, that's 15k back though, right? From uh, from the from the packs. That that puts us already in a, a commanding position with the consumables we put into the club and stuff. We're in a good spot there. But yeah, I know I rambled on a lot here. Uh, I know I, I probably said some things that were about, that were inaccurate. Uh, because I, I like... Sometimes I just like go off of figures that I know from old years. Sometimes I just go off of things that I kind of guesstimate, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, giving percentages of players that are affected by this outage or, or, or saying, you know, EA won't change anything unless it affects more than 5%. Like, that's me just using guesswork to kind of give uh, you guys a, a visualization of, of what I'm trying to explain. Um, and, and as I say, like, I, I love this game. Uh, I love the community that comes with this game i love a lot of things about this game and i personally don't think that the fight is worth it here and and just because you do and i don't that doesn't mean that i'm bad or that you're wrong or that i'm wrong or that you're right that doesn't mean anyone's right or wrong it just means that we have differences of opinions in this one and that my opinion is that this isn't a fight that's worth it and and what I, the only thing I would say is I don't feel like, and, and this isn't speaking about me, this is speaking on the behalf of content creators because I've seen a lot of people getting a lot of heat. And like I say, I'm, I'm the only one that responds to it. I'm the only one that rises to the debate and, and, and talks back about it. Here's another walkout. Come on, EA, what are you hitting us with? Big card? Is it a big card? French? Is it Kante? Oh, Matuidi, get out of my face, dude. What a troll he is, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't think... I don't think content creators, that's a really nice pack, Tovan in there as well, uh, deserve to be abused because they won't stand up for your cause, you know, for, for your fight or for what you want changed. If you want to make a change, you set your petition up, you go through the routes that you can, social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, even your favorite content creators, ask them, be like, hey, this is what I want changed. We back this. We sign this petition and, and then go that way. But to just leave the burden on the content creator and say, hey, you got to do this. That's a really nice uh, card to get there, that Johnny. To say, hey, you got to do this. Otherwise, it's clear to me that the only thing you care about is money. That's not very fair on those people. They, they didn't, you know, they didn't sign up to be what you are now putting them on a pedestal to be. And and I don't, I, I you know, I think if, if a content creator wanted to make a dramatic drastic change they would do it off their own back without the peer pressure or the pressure in general of other viewers and so if you are pressing and if you are pressuring someone to 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 stand up to ea it's, it's just it's not something that's gonna end well it's just not something that's gonna have the longevity that you want it to have it's not something that's gonna have the impact you want it to have because it has to come naturally it has to be it has to be real and it has to be wanted from the person that is is starting the cause in the first place um in my opinion of course uh, but anyway so as i say this new league sbc system i haven't sold all my silvers and bronzes yet as i said I, i'm, I'm going to be keeping bronzes anyway and then we're going to go through uh silvers and i'm going to sell them as i pack them and i wanted to see whether or not i could generate real profit through grinding the top five leagues and selling the rest off and so on a case like this, we get this guy that we're going to sell and he'll go for like 500 coins, 600 coins maybe. Uh, and in the meantime, we're putting lots more uh, top league players into the club. Uh, lots, I've seen lots of Premier League and French League cards go back into the club already. Uh, but as you can see as well, we've actually got a lot of players that aren't going uh, into the club because we've still got so many duplicates, right? And so when before I did uh, the Spanish League, I had 870k. We packed Dabur, who's selling for 20k. We packed Matuidi, who's probably like, what, 15k or so. We've stacked already 
loads and loads of um, consumables in the club that are sellable. We've popped a whole bunch of items on the transfer list that is also sellable. We got another few 83s and 84s and now an 85. Oh, no, wait. Kramaric. Wow, what a troll. Um, another 83 uh, into the club that can be used or sold at a later date. And um, I'm at 800,000 coins. So once I sell off all of the items that are necessary to sell off, and once we start, you know, waiting for the trade pile to kind of like really empty out and see how many coins we're back up to, I would be very interested to see how close to 880k I could get. Now, of course, as I say, um, I, I stored uh, the Dabur. That's 20k straight away. And I stored the Matuidi. And that's, let's even say, 10, 12k. Uh, so I stored 35k's worth of content into the club with already the the discard things that we're going to get here and stuff. That would put me up toward like 840,000 coins. So I'm only like 30 to 40,000 coins short with excluding consumables and excluding items that haven't sold and excluding items that I've stored into the club, right? So I, I think just off of my initial... Um, just off of my initial kind of understanding of what we're doing here, it seems like it's as effective as what we were doing before. I don't want to necessarily say that it's better or worse at this stage. I think we're still at early stages, uh, but I definitely think it's as effective um, with uh, with doing five leagues versus doing all the leagues. And here we've got a few more players that we're just going to get, like I say, just a few coins from, man. Nothing, nothing major here. Uh, just a few coins from uh, that all adds up. You know, you sell 100 players at 300 coins and all of a sudden, you, you you know, you start, you really start putting some numbers into the club. And when you hit a player like this that's selling for like two and a half, three and a half thousand coins, uh, you, you start to really realize, oh crap, man, if I would have kept that guy, yeah, I would have saved three and a half thousand coins. But by selling him, I generate so much more. And we're going to get ourselves to end with another board card. Um, it's going to be an Italian goalkeeper. Ugh. Of course, of course, it's going to be Viviano. It's, it's very rarely pair in, man. Um, and so this has been a good pack for us with Martinez there. Strasbourg player is very nice to get. Uh, the two uh, Pirates guys will keep. The Anderlecht player probably doesn't sell for much because Anderlecht are mostly a gold team. Uh, but I will still go and get my 400 coins for him. Uh, the White Caps player should hopefully sell for a bit. Nope, not even again. So a few few hundred coins for him. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see your guys' um, thoughts, guys, down below. And and if any civil comments, no matter how hardball the question theoretically can be, I will respond to it. I'll answer it. I'll, I'll engage with you guys, no problem. Uh, but any just like toxic responses, any just like uh, you know, you know, just the typical being being an uh, being an asshole responses. They'll just kind of get ignored and, and deleted and, and whatever, right? I'm, I'm not here to, like, uh, just be abused by people, right? I, I'm happy to have a conversation about it, but that's where I'm at with it. And and that, that's 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 my genuine thoughts on it, you know? And I realize I'm in a tricky position because I I I want to please the fans, but I also got to do what's right for me. And sometimes um, that's not always right for what everybody else wants. But here we are, guys. So we're up to 810,000 with the two big cards and with everything else. I think we got a, a large chunk back. But this is going to be the end of the video. Um, this is going to be a really long video. I can just feel it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.